What's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to read the price chart on GDAX. We're also gonna to touch on candlesticks, which can be applied really anywhere you can find a candlestick chart, which is literally all over the place. Last time we talked about the trade history and we saw that this data is very detailed. It gives us every trade or tick that occurs in the marketplace. When we look at the trade history, we are seeing the actual prices where transactions occurred for the given asset. Price charts give us a way to summarize the price data over time. If all we had was a table or a spreadsheet full of the transaction data, we would probably want to graph it out or get some summary statistics to better understand what is actually going on. And this is exactly what the price charts do for us. These price charts typically come in the form of candlestick charts with a volume overlay. Candlestick charts are well suited for displaying what is called time series data. This this is just any series of data points that occur over time. This is exactly what we have in the trade history. And like we discussed before, the trade history is even called time and sales data. One natural way to visualize the trade history is to just plot each transaction over time using a scatter plot. This is kind of what a candlestick chart does, but with a candlestick chart, the transactions are aggregated into groups. Each candlestick is a group that represents the trades that occurred during some period of time. For this reason, candle sticks can be thought of as buckets or groups or periods. We often say the period of a candlestick chart to refer to the time period that each candlestick represents. In GDAX, we can choose the period with this drop down. The options are one minute, five minute, 15 minutes, one hour, six hours, and one day. So if we choose the one minute period, each candlestick will represent one minute of trading. If we hover over the most recent candlestick, we will see that time period that particular candlestick represents. And if we slide to the left, we will see the time period change. And these changes are happening by the minute since we have one minute candlesticks selected as our period. If we want each candlestick on our chart to represent a day, then we will choose the 1D or one day option. Now this gives us candlesticks that are representing one full day of trading. And by hovering, we can see that 7 p.m. is the cutoff that GDAX uses. This means that a new candlestick will form when the clock strikes seven. And it would be nice if they would also post a time zone here. I'm not sure exactly which time zone they use, but it's probably gonna be EST or PST. Anyway, the group that we select gives gives us the trade history summarized using a candlestick for each group. And we can think of each one of these as a period or a time period. So for this one, the time period is February 1st. And then if we go back, we can see January 31st, January 30th, January 29th, and so on. The other thing that you may have noticed by looking at the group label at the top is this mapping. This little arrow just there tells us that the indicated group or period period maps to these values, O, H, L, and C. The OHLC values are the values used to generate the candlestick. They are the summary values for each group and the candlestick is the visualization of these values. So sometimes a candlestick chart is also called an OHLC chart. Let's take a look at how this works. A basic candlestick looks like this. The high is at the top, the low is at the bottom, and then we have the open and the close. The open is the first trade that occurred in the period, and the close is the last trade that occurred in the period. Depending on which platform you're using, the colors and fills can mean different things. GDAX has the simplest of these schemes. If the open is higher than the close, the stick is red and filled solidly. This means the price dropped during the period. And if the open is lower than the close, the stick is green and not filled. This means the price rose during the period. 
and it's as simple as that. Now, sometimes there won't be a wick at the top or at the bottom if the close or the open is equal to the high or the low. But let's jump back to GDAX and we can see some examples. This is a still snapshot that I snagged of LTC earlier when the trading was a little light and so we can see the data for several one minute periods in the trade history. The first group corresponds to the latest candlestick. The second group corresponds to the previous and the third to the previous previous candlestick. Each of these candlesticks are generated using the trade data in the corresponding groups. For each set of trades, one, two, and three, we can look at each member of the set to find the OHLC values or open, high, low, and close. Since the first group is the latest, these values are listed at the top by default. This group is for the 1252 one minute period. We can see that in the time column. Now let's just verify that these values are correct. The open is the first trade that occurs in the time period. The display at the top tells us that this value is 122.99. And looking down at the data, we can see that the first trade that occurred in the 1252 time period was indeed 122.99. The close on the other hand is the latest trade that occurs in the period. And we can see that this value was 122.99. This also happens to be the latest trade overall, which is why the flag also says 122.96. The next attribute to discuss is the color of the candlestick. The stick shows as red, and this is what we would expect since the close is lower than the open. For the previous two candlesticks that are green, we can see that the close was higher than the open for both of them. The last thing I want to check is the high and the low on the last candlestick. The display says that the low is 122.80 and scanning the trade history, we can see that 122.80 is right here. We can also see the highest price is 123, which is also in the trade history and is the highest price we can find. Since the lowest price is below the open, we can see a lower wick for this candle right here on the bottom. This is how candlesticks are formed. I want you to notice how candlesticks reduce or summarize the trade history. No matter how many trades occur within a time period, all the trades for the period are ultimately summarized by open, high, low, and close values. With candlesticks alone, we only have these four values for each time period. We lose the information regarding the number and size of trades in the period. This information isn't stored in the candlesticks, but in the volume overlay. For this reason, we're going to discuss the volume in the next video.